If you want to find out what's happening with Norway's $1 trillion sovereign wealth fund, watch this video. Norway's wealth fund, which stands around $1 trillion in total, lost a considerable amount last year as the stock markets fell, particularly in the fourth quarter. They decided to use this as an opportunity to buy even more equities in an attempt to seek more profit long term. It seems as though they are doing what other central banks around the world are doing, supporting the US stock market at all costs. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, this video is not just for my friends in Norway, but all around the world. We are seeing central banks taking over everything. Now, in Norway, the situation works a little different than some other countries. We have, I'm told, oil revenues initially funding this particular sovereign wealth fund, which is then managed by an offshoot of the central bank. I want to get into this today by introducing the Norwegian Central Bank and what they do. Then I want to show you a few different articles that list their performance throughout 2018, some important facts. Then I'm going to show you the actual data directly from the source. Let's get into it right away. Really quickly, the NBIM is the asset management unit of the Norwegian Central Bank. They manage the government pension fund, often referred to as the Norwegian Oil Fund, and some of that bank's foreign exchange reserves. Of course, they suggest they're here to maximize the profit for the people of Norway. I know that a lot of people in Norway love this. They think it's great. I have a difference of opinion with any central bank, and that's not against Norway. That's not against what the fund does and the performance because obviously it has grown substantially over the years. I just don't like central banks. I don't know why they have to do it this way. Why does the central bank's offshoot have to manage the fund? Why can't be it done by a government agency completely under the control of the government? You don't need that central bank around. That's a whole different point. That's a whole different discussion. Let's move on. Norway's $1 trillion sovereign wealth fund bought a net $22 billion in equities at the end of 2018 and continued to make, quote, significant purchases at the start of this year to take advantage of a market route as it builds its global holdings. So remember that we don't get the information for what these central banks do at any given time. We can't just find out what they own at this point or what they bought yesterday. It doesn't work like that. We're either getting quarterly statements, and I find that the MBIM website is extremely outdated for the most part. However, I will show you the data that is directly from the source and updated as of the end of 2018. And they have a really, really good website. So I'm going to show that to you. But let's just cover a couple points very quickly. In 2018, they suffered the first loss since 2011, declining 6.1% in 2018. Stock holdings slid 9.5%, bonds rose 0.6%, and real estate gained 7.5%. And that gives you an idea of what happened with stocks over the year. This fund is particularly overweight on equities, and I believe I have some more information about that. In the last point, it said the fund held 66% in stocks, 30% in bonds, and 3% in real estate. In one article I read, they talked about taking that up to 70%, 70% in equities. They're basically going all in. In the last video I did about the Norway Central Bank, they had actually gone up from a previous high, went even further. And of course, as we saw with the US equities, as they have risen we have seen portfolios that are holding us equities obviously benefiting from that this of course isn't exactly wise if you go back to benjamin graham the intelligent investor the man who warren buffett and the like look up to he suggests way overweight on bonds now it's a different time it's a different era i understand however this is really different than what we have seen many big funds do they are really overweight on equity and they are trying to squeeze out as much as possible. That's good in times that are good, but it's very bad in tough times. So we'll see what the future has in store. Now, this right here is a translated article. You can read the data on the left-hand side. However, if you look at the right-hand side, you can see the oil fund return over the years from 2008 up until present. And there have been some years where the fund did not perform well at all, though over the course 
of this period of time, it has done much better than many others out there. So you can go to the NBIM website and they have this really good interactive map and charts that allow you to look into the details. It's fantastic. The only thing I wish it was updated more often. However, it doesn't seem to be. But we have information as of the end of December 2018 and this is what we have. You can look at all the different countries. You can see their fixed income, real estate, and of course, equities. And when I look at the United States as a whole, we can see over the years, they have been putting more and more money into it. And it breaks it down in terms of US dollar. We're looking at about $250 million. Now that's of course not that significant, but you have to think of it in comparison to how big Norway is. Okay. So this shows us that they have been increasing their purchases of US stocks over over the years. If I go to the search list, I can actually search for particular companies to see if they have bought them. And I didn't think of this beforehand, but possibly we're going to look up Apple and see what they own here. Yes, they do own Apple. And I can see that this looks to be approximately $7 billion worth. That is a pretty big chunk. I can search for other shares. Perhaps I want to look at Amazon. Maybe they own that as well. It appears that they do have it about six billion dollars so all of these central banks including Norway's central bank in this case here of course as I mentioned initially they apparently didn't print up money out of thin air however what I'm seeing is that central banks around the world whether they're managed in this way whether it's printed fiat out of thin air regardless they are now in control of some of the biggest corporations in the world what I have noted more recently is that central banks have continued to print money except for the Federal Reserve. And then we have actual real investors, big investors that have sold off a considerable amount of their shares that has actually continued beyond what we have seen beyond this rally. They've been selling. Things have changed. I've done a video about that. Let me just cover this for a moment. I'd like to show you some more details here. If you want to check this out, of course you should. And that link will be in the description under the sources. It's really a fantastic site that gives you a lot of insight into exactly what they're buying. Of course, I don't have time to just go through it all, but I wanted to give you some insight into this. Equity purchases in a weak market. This comes directly from the NBIM website on February 27th. The government pension fund global returned 6.1% negative 6.1%. The funds market value fluctuated widely in 2018, a year dominated by volatile markets. There was a positive return in the second and third quarters, but a weak equity market in the first and fourth quarters reduced the funds overall results. And remember what we saw initially in 20 18, you had the VIX, then everything fell down through February. And at the end of the year from October, all the way basically to the last few trading days were terrible. And of course, when you have nearly 70% of your fund invested in equities, and they're all being pushed down, not just in the United States, but emerging markets, the US, Europe, and so on, everybody was feeling it. So this fund obviously lost as a result. In this article out of Reuters, they're talking about UK and Norway and their connections. The fund built from Norway's oil and gas revenues and one of the biggest investors in Britain said 8.5% of its portfolio was in British equities, bonds and real estate at the end of 2018. We will continue to be significant investors in Britain and we foresee that over time our investments in the UK will increase. With our our time horizon, which is 30 years plus, current political discussions do not change our view of the situation. So he's basically saying what's happening with Brexit, what you're seeing with the turmoil, we're not concerned about that. So I wanted my friends in the UK to know what's happening with Norway and how they're going to funnel more money towards your country. That's the way I look at it. And of course, when we see this, it's positive in a time when all the information I've been seeing about the UK, about Britain has 
has been negative for the most part. They're saying, okay, if they do a Brexit, it's extremely bad. This is going to send the markets down. The currency weakens. Then they finally sign Article 50 in. Markets are loving it, but there's still turmoil. Then they don't love it anymore. Then it goes down. The currency weakens. And then two weeks later, the exact same information is around, but suddenly everything flips on its back and nobody knows what's going on. And then you hear some other information coming about how we have absolutely no progress. Nothing's been done. We don't think a Brexit's going to happen. And then the stocks go down and the currency weakens. Nobody knows what the hell is going on right now. And of course, this is a little bit of positivity in such a dark world for the businesses, for all those corporations that are going to benefit from that money coming from Norway, not the average individual, of course. But I just want to show you some of that positivity. Hopefully, if the money continues to flow in there, then these companies will not have to lay people off when times get tough and so on. The bank said the fund's market value was $967 million at December 31st, 2018. On the same day, 66% invested in equities as I discussed. And right here, actually, this is the article in CNBC. They talked about how they had wanted this to go to 70% over time. So we'll see how soon it will be before they get to that number. But that's clearly where they're heading, as I have shown you on this channel documented that they have increased over the years. Just to give you an idea in chart form, this information comes from their website. You'll see that clearly it has gone up over time. They have done very well for themselves, despite some years not performing as well as others. This has obviously been very beneficial to them. And if any individual is benefiting from this, well then, seems like they've done a good job. I don't think that necessarily it's benefiting the little guy as much as the big guy, but that's besides the point point. So I'm going to finish the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. I want all of my friends in Norway to please share your opinions here. If you have any other facts, if you have any other information, you are sharing this with the rest of the world. We would like to know what's happening, what you see on the ground. So of course, I would love to hear from you. If you want to find out what happened with the Swiss National Bank, I'll do that at the very end of this video. And if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. We're talking foundation, history, asset classes. These books fit into each other like a lock and key. So you definitely want to read both of them for 30 bucks. You get the education that was never, ever told to you. And so many people have have benefited from this data and I really hope that you'll check it out in the description of the video if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what the Swiss National Bank has been up to, what they bought, what they sold, I did a video that breaks it all down. If you haven't seen it, click on this and I'll see you there.